Welcome back, Sebastian here. So today I'm going to be doing my preview for the 2024 Bahrain Grand Prix, uh, the first race of this year's Formula One season. So uh, starting off, just talking a little bit about last year's race. Uh, it was a Verstappen win with Perez second uh, and Fernando Alonso third getting a podium in his first race for uh, Aston Martin. It was, of course, uh, the first race of Red Bull Racing domination. Uh, some other moments from the race were Leclerc's DNF from third place very late in the Grand Prix looked on course uh, for a podium there uh, and of course Stroll's recovery from his wrist injury, his cycling accident uh, managed a very uh, solid sixth place that day. Uh, McLaren of course had an absolutely miserable race uh, you know a DNF for one uh, for Piastri and then uh, Norris had I believe six pit stops in that Grand Prix but anyway enough, enough about uh, last year uh, let's take a look at this year. So first, uh, we'll take a look at the schedule. And I think I really want to make clear uh, the Grand Prix this year is on Saturday, not Sunday. Uh, I think the TV numbers are probably going to be pretty bad just because there's going to be so many people that aren't aware of that. But anyway, uh, Thursday, so uh, Formula 2 is in blue, F1's in red. Uh, uh, F2, uh, practice session 12.05 local time. FP1 for F, uh, Formula 1, uh, 2.30 local time. Qualifying for Formula 2 is at uh, 4.55 local time and then FP2 uh, 6 p.m. in the evening to finish off Thursday's running. Uh, for Friday, FP3 3.30 in the afternoon. Uh, the sprint race for Formula 2 is at 5.15 and then qualifying is at 7 p.m. on Friday. Uh, and then Saturday, last day of running, the feature race for Formula 2 is at 1.30 in the afternoon and then the Grand Prix is 6 o'clock lights out. So, uh, you, know, you know, pretty tight calendar. Uh, of course, Formula 3 is also there as well, so there's gonna be uh, two, two uh, support races there uh, to watch. Now, uh, taking a look at the track, uh, the Secure Circuit, we've been there many, many times. I think this is the 20th anniversary, uh, something like that, of the Bahrain Grand Prix. Of course, uh, your best chances to overtake are at turn one with eight of DRS, turn four as well. Uh, if you're overtaken, you can retake your position at turn four. So you have a double dose of DOS there. <clears throat> then we have the technical section, uh, five, six, uh, seven, eight. Of course, then there's turn 10, very, very tricky corner. Not really an overtaking corner unless you're Fernando Alonso last year. Uh, but then final straight with DOS going to turn 11. Uh, but because turn 11 is more of a medium city corner, uh, not as much overtaking there. And as well, not much overtaking on that final back straight. But those corners are very important uh, as it's a real limited track. Uh, so getting a really good exit out of those corners is key to getting uh, get finding lap time around this track. Uh, it's very abrasive. It hasn't been resurfaced once since it was first made. And I think apparently because of the way that the sand has basically eaten up at the asphalt, uh, it's, it has gotten more and more abrasive every year. Uh, and of course, because it's a fairly wide track and because of uh, DRS being quite powerful here, uh, overtaking is not too difficult. Uh, it's generally a pretty good track for racing. Uh, and we generally have pretty good races here, so it does, is a decent race for a season opener. Now, uh, tires for this weekend, uh, hard C1, medium C2, and soft C3. Uh, those are the hardest three tires in the range, of course, because the track is so abrasive. And we may see a race, uh, we may find, get to see which teams uh, are, are the best on tire match. We saw, we saw last year with the Aston Martin, while well, it wasn't the best car in qualifying, uh, it, it had such good tire management that it was basically able to pass the Mercedes and the Ferraris uh, on track fairly easily uh, because of the their tire management was so much better. Now, uh, something new this year. So I've gotten best uh, qualifiers and worst qualifiers at this track. So for Ricardo, out of 11 races, he's out qualified his teammate 82% of the time, uh, average difference of uh, 0.287. Uh, second, so two, two and a, almost three tenths of a second there advantage. Uh, then we have Russell, five Grand Prix or five qualifying sessions, uh, out qualified his teammate 80% of the time, and, and an advantage of just over one tenth of a second. Uh, then we have Alonso, third out of nine Grand Prix. Of course, I'm only doing this since 2010, uh, since because because 20 before 2010, uh, the qualifying format was very different, uh, and it was a lot more unpredictable and not a lot less. Uh, reliable to basically tell who uh, was basically the better driver because you had to qualify on your fuel loads. So uh, yeah, from 2010, but Alonso 9 Grand Prix, he qualified his teammate 78% of the time uh, for an average uh, advantage of zero, uh, 0 0.239 seconds. 
Ten. Uh, worst three drivers. Uh, worst is Stroll uh, from seven qualifying sessions. He's only out qualified his teammate uh, 14% of the time, which I believe is once. once. And I believe that was Hulkenberg, possibly. Or maybe it was Metal. I think it was about one of the years at Aston Martin. Uh, but then anyway, yeah, uh, on average, I'll qualify by over, just over two tenths of a second. Then we have Snowda, uh, three Grand Prix, uh, average uh, on out qualified, or his only out qualified his teammate, uh, 33% of the time, uh, an average gap of just over two tenths of a second, like Stroll. <coughs> and then third, Paris uh, from 12 Grand Prix, out qualified, only out qualified teammate, uh, one third of the time, and average margin is uh, 0 0.095 seconds. So. Uh, yeah, those are the best three and worst three, and this is something that I'll be trying to uh, keep track of through the whole season. So it'll be interesting to see who uh, ends up on top in the, the, each of their uh, respective teammate head-to-head -head battles there. Of course, I've done a minimum of uh, three races, just because you need to have some sample size, and otherwise uh, Sargent would end up on the worst for every single Grand Prix, so kind of unfair there. Now, uh, finishing off with some predictions for this uh, weekend's Grand Prix, I think based on the strength of testing, uh, I think it's fairly reasonable to expect uh, a Max Verstappen victory, kind of like I just, just last, did last year. It's basically a free space. Uh, I hope that the field's a bit closer than it was last year, but still, I think at this point, based on what we saw from testing and given that the venue is the same, uh, I think the running from testing is going to be pretty similar to what we have in the Grand Prix. So uh, Ferrari looks very good as well. Uh, not as good as Red Bull, I think most people would say, but still very good. So I'm going to predict uh, Charles Leclerc in second. And third, I think it's going to be a tough one. Uh, I'm going to, let's see, what should I do? I'm going to go down to uh, Sergio Perez. I think Perez, uh, while his qualifying record is obviously not great at this track, uh, I think on the race, in the races, uh, he'll be fine. Uh, he generally does better at, in the races on real limited tracks. Uh, of which this is one of them. So uh, I'm going to put Paris to round out that podium in third. So uh, that's all for my preview of this weekend's Bahrain Grand Prix. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.